In this video, we're going to show you how to remove and replace rear wheel cylinders on a Jeep Wrangler located inside the rear drums. So we're going to remove the wheel, 19 millimeter socket, and just take it off. So now we can remove the drum, that, drop it down. So whenever you're doing just a wheel cylinder and your shoes and drum are in good shape, you do not need to remove the shoes completely. You just need to take that wheel cylinder out. So to do that, we're going to take just the top springs off. So with our spring tool, I'm just going to rest it aside. Take that slacker cable off. And now we can actually move these shoes like this so that we can get really get into that wheel cylinder. That's all we need to do. So now we're on the back side of the backing plate. We have our brake line going into our wheel cylinder and our two mounting screws, one here and one on the other side. I already have a catch basin down below to catch any brake fluid. And this fitting happens to be a 3 8 It is a older standard material, so we don't have a lot of metric on this vehicle. I'm just going to loosen this up. I'm not going to take it completely off because I don't want to make too much of a mess. I'm going to get my socket first. 10 millimeter or 3 8 socket and we're going to dismount our two bolts. And that's why you have that catch basin down below. They're not long bolts, they're really short little bolts. They're like a 6 millimeter. Take one out, see how short those are? Replace them if you feel like you need to. These are pretty rusty, so I probably will replace them. Nice. Now I'm going to take that line off the rest of the way. Show you a little trick. Take the boot off the actual bleeder screw. And when I take this line off, I'm going to put it on the end of it. And it just kind of slows the dripping down. I'm going to bring it up here, and I'll just put that boot right on the end, just like that. Now with a pry bar or a screwdriver, we're going to go back on this side, and I'm just going to take that wheel cylinder and pop it right out, just like that. I like to guide it up, and you're just going to have to slide it, tilt it, and slide it right out. And there it is. Now to put the new wheel cylinder in, I'm going to make sure I take that rubber boot out, but I'm going to take it out after I install, so that way I don't get any grease or dirt inside that where the line goes. So I'm just going to slide it back basically the way I took it out. Make sure that bleeder screw is on the top. Work it around. As you can see, and we're just going to place it right in like that. There we go. Now I'm going to hold it in place and go around the back side and just install two of the bolts, the two mounting bolts, just a little bit by hand. So now from the, you can see the back side here, so we're going to take one mounting bolt and that way you can just freely kind of wiggle it until it centers and just put it hand tight. I'm not going to mount that really tight because I want that wheel cylinder to have a little bit of free play so it's easier to install the actual line. It's a little, little kind of a tech tip there. Some people, right off the bat, they just start tightening everything down. And I'm going to tell you that it's so much easier to have the flow of that wheel cylinder to get that line seated. There we go. 
All right, there we go. So now we can take that boot off, set it aside. And I'm gonna bring that line, take that packaging boot, set it aside. And I'll take that line, bring it right in, seat it. There we go. So now once you get that line started, I'm gonna snug it up. I'm not gonna tighten it, tighten it. I'm gonna get some of this dripping to stop. And you can see it's a new line. Same size as the factory, which is a 3 16 line. 3 16 fitting. And if you need to know, this is a single flare. It's not a bubble flare. It's a double flare, shall I say. It's not a bubble flare. So there we go. Once I get it snugged, now with our 3 8 socket, I can really snug up on these mounting bolts, both of them. Now there is no torque specs for this, so you bottom it out, turn a good quarter turn so you feel like it's nice and tight. Don't over tighten, it's a small bolt, it will snap. Make sure that that wheel cylinder is seated flush on that backing plate. Now with a flare end of a wrench, I'm gonna really tighten up on this line. I wanna get all that to stop. Now if you made a line like this, if you had to make a homemade line, I'll give you a little key advice. Make sure it is not hitting any rubber and it's not bowed out where it can be pinched in a leaf or the tire. So you don't want excess line. And we're gonna spray it clean. And we can reassemble the shoes. Now we can reassemble the shoes. I'm gonna pull that out. Don't forget to make sure you line up that slacker bar, that mid bar right here in the center with that spring on it. It's got that little opening on both sides. It's gonna go right in where those shoes grab. Now we can center the shoes. Make sure we get that slacker cable. Bar goes like this with the hump over the axle part like this. And the wider end goes on the side with the e-brake pivot. And that's on this side is the rear, rear one. So we're going to line that right up. See how that sits right there like that? And then seat the shoe. Now that both the shoes are seated, the back spring goes on first, but first we have to seat that little clip. It's a guide for the actual, so we'll take the spring right out. So that's a guide for the slack cable. So I'm gonna put a little bit of paste, like brake caliper grease on the back of this guide. It stops it from moving around while we try to put the spring in. We can actually push on it and let it go. Now we're gonna take our slacker cable. I'm gonna take it off the bottom arm so it's easier to route it without the pressure on it. So that goes there, over that little half moon, let it rest. Now we can take our spring that in the hole like that, bring it up, get our installation tool. And on the brake tool, that is the open inside. See that little hook? You're gonna put it like that and guide it on that pivot. Just like that. Now always pay attention to that little half moon. Sometimes it will pop out of the mounting hole. Luckily as did not. Now I can install the other spring, put the front forward spring on, do the same thing. Crimp them up. That's this tool. Now I'm going to put my hook on. See how the inner loop and has the adjuster right there. So you're gonna bring it right down. Put that on the inside, the hook. Bring this up and hook it right in. Just like that. Take our drum, 
and reinstall it. So make sure your adjustment is good on your brake shoes. Then you're going to bleed the brakes. So check your master first. Check the manual for what kind of brake fluid, whether it's dot three or dot four. Top that off, and then go ahead and bleed your wheel cylinder. Install it. Put your lug nuts on. It's a 19 millimeter socket. We're going to just snug it up. Go in a star pattern. The wheel torque for this specific vehicle is 85 to 110 foot pounds. I'm going to go right at 110 because it is of older age. You're going to torque it in star pattern. Double check. So now with a brake adjuster tool, it's a little flat blade. You can also use a flat screwdriver, but I'm going to remove the inspection with the adjuster boot. Get that right out of the way. And I can see the actual star. It's right here. That's the adjusting part of it. Now I remember when I put it together, the clip was on the bottom of it. So that would tell me that it's going to move like this to adjust the star out. So you're going to go from the top and pull down. Hear that clicking? That tells me I'm going the right direction. So that bar that goes on that spring load is actually a lock to stop it from backing off. And it also adjusts every time you apply the brakes, it'll spin that wheel. So the proper way to adjust is with the tire on. And you want to spin it until you hear those shoes start to hit the drum. Hear that sound? That's the shoe starting to hit the drum. Now to do this properly, you can mark it. If you do it from the outside, you can uh, spin it and check for a, um, the valve stem. But So what we'll do then is right through here, I can see the valve stem is right here. And I'm going to spin this wheel. I want it to get a full rotation before it stops on its own. Yeah, it's right here. That's perfect for me. Because as you go down the road, drum brakes, shoes, they actually expand just because of the heat. And you don't want it over tight because it will lock the wheel up. And under tight will give you a low brake pedal. So I like the adjustment. I have no locking either way. I have just the right amount of drag. I'm going to put that boot back in. And an eight millimeter wrench, I have someone inside to help me pump up the brakes. So we're gonna take that boot cover off and it is an eight millimeter. Go ahead and pump the brakes up and hold them. And of course, this is after I've already cleaned out the master fluid and topped it off with fresh fluid. Eight millimeter wrench. And I'm gonna put on my little catcher. Let's open it up. So you wanna catch no, you wanna do it till you get no air. Close it up. Pump it up. Got lots of air in here. Close it up. Pump it up.
Pump it up. I'm just going to see how much air I have. I have a catch basin down below. Okay, I've got no air. So I'm going to close this up tight. So now I'm going to clean it off with some brake clean. And re put that dust boot right on that bleeder screw. Now we're going to top our master fluid off. When that happens right there, that's normal. That means the suction was pulling down on that. You're just going to push that boot right back in, inward like that, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Now we can take our brake fluid and top it off. This time we're not going to go all the way to the top. We're going to go right to that fill line. Brake fluid does expand. See those two dots right there? That's where the manufacturer would like it, right in between those two lines. Place the cover, make sure it's tight, and now we're ready to go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.